Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 1.6, multiply by one digit numbers. The essential question for this lesson is, how do you multiply by one digit numbers? Now, open up in your GoMath workbook to page 13 and let's get started. Now, as we begin to multiply by one digit numbers in this lesson, there's a concept that I want you to understand. That concept is that you are to repeat the process of multiplying and regrouping until every place value is multiplied. So we're going to start out by taking a look at question number one. Now as you can see, question number one has already been completed for you, but I want to walk you through it to make sure that you understand why this answer makes sense. Now for question number one, your job is to estimate and then find the product. So we're going to start out first of all by getting a good estimate of what our answers should be. In this problem, our job is to multiply 416 by 9. So if I'm going to estimate, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to think, what could I turn that 416 into? That would be a much easier number to work with. Well, I know that 416 is close to 400. So I'm going to turn that into 400. Now, I'm going to keep my 9 the same because I know what 9 times 4 is. That's an, a basic fact that I should know. Now, when I make my estimate, if I know that 9 times 4 is 36, and I'm going to start there and write the 36 down, I see that behind my 400 there are two zeros. So now down beside my 36, I'm also going to add two zeros. So my estimate turns out to be 3,600. That estimate is going to help keep me on track to make sure that my exact answer is what it should be. Now, let's take a look at how to now find the product. I'm going to use place value and regrouping as I multiply these numbers together. So what happens first is, we're going to first of all multiply the 1's. So I'm going to take my 9 and I'm going to multiply it by the 6, which is in the 1's place. Well, I know that 9 times 6 is 54. So I'm going to write my 4 down and I'm going to regroup my 5. Now my next step is, I'm now going to multiply by the tens. So I'm going to take my 9 and I'm going to multiply it by the 1 which is in the tens place. Well I know that 9 times 1 is going to give me 9, but I now have to add my regrouped 5. 9 times 1 is 9 and 9 plus 5 is going to give me 14. So I write down my 4 and I regroup my 1's. Now I have to multiply by the hundreds. So I'm going to take my 9 and I'm now going to multiply it by the 4. Well I know that 9 times 4 is going to give me 36 but I also have to add my regrouped 1. So 36 plus 1 gives me 37. So I'm going to write down my 37 and my answer turns out to be 3,744. Now, let's take a look at question number four together. Once again, our job is to estimate and then find the product. So let's start out with our estimate for this problem. For question four, they give us 872, and our job is to multiply that by the three. So I look at my 872 and I think, what could I turn that into that would be a very easy number to work with mentally? So what I know is, I know that 872 is close to 900. So I'm going to turn that into 900. Now I'm going to keep my 3 just like it is. Because when I look at this problem, I know that 9 times 3 is 27. So I'm going to write down my 27 and I want to point out that behind the 9 there are two zeros. So now behind my 27 I also want to add two zeros. So here's 1, here's 2. So my estimated answer turns out to be 2,700. Now, I also have to find the exact product. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to use, once again, place value and regrouping in order to do that. Now, my first step is going to be this. I'm going to multiply the 1's. So I'm going to take my 3 and I'm going to multiply it by the 2, which is in the 1's place. Well, I know that 3 times 2 is going to give me 6. And I don't have a number in the 10's place that I have to regroup. So I'm going to move on and my next step is going to be this. I'm going to multiply the tens. So I'm now going to take my 3 and I'm going to multiply it by the 7 which is in the tens place. 
Well, I know that 7 times 3 is going to give me 21, so I'm going to write the ones, 1 down, and I'm going to regroup the 2. Now, my next step is, I now have to multiply the hundreds. So I'm going to take my 3, and I'm going to multiply it by my 8, which is in the hundreds place. Well, I know that 3 times 8 is going to give me 24, but I also have to add my regrouped 2 to that as well. So 3 times 8 is 24, and 24 plus 2 is going to give me 26. So what I end up with is, as my product, is 2,616. Now, let's take a look at question number 8. Once again, our job is to estimate and then find the product. Well, when I look at question number 8, I see that it's written a little differently than the last few problems have been. So what I'm going to do first is this. I'm going to take my 503 and I'm going to write the 503 down. And then I'm just going to place my 7 right down below it so that it's much easier for me to work with. Now, once again, my first job is to estimate. So I'm going to ask myself, if I have 503, what's a number close to 503 that would be very easy to work with? And what I know is this. I know that 500 is a number close to 503 that would be very easy for me to work with. Now, I'm going to keep my 7 just like it is, so I'm going to take my 500 and multiply it by 7. Well, what I know is this. I know that 7 times 5 is going to give me 35, so I'm going to write my 35 down. Now, behind that 5, I notice that there are 1, 2 zeros. So behind my 35, I'm also going to write down 1, 2 zeros. So my estimated answer turns out to be 3,000. 500. Now I also have to find the exact product. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to work through this problem again using place value and regrouping. Now my first job once again is to multiply the ones. So I'm going to take my 7 and multiply it by my 3 which is in the ones place. Well I know that 7 times 3 is going to give me 21 so I'm going to write my 1 down and I'm going to regroup my 2. Now my next job is to multiply by the tens. So I'm going to take my 7 and multiply it by the 0, which is in the tens place. Well, I know that 7 times 0 is 0, but I can't forget to add my regrouped 2. So 7 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 2 is going to give me 2. So I'm going to write a 2 down. Now I don't have anything to regroup, so now I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the hundreds. So I'm going to take my 7 and multiply it by the 5, which is in the hundreds place. Well, I know that 7 times 5 is going to give me 35, so I'm going to write a 35 down, and my exact answer, the product, turns out to be 3,521. Now, let's take a look at question number 10. Our job is once again to estimate and then find the product. So what I'm going to do first is this. I'm going to take my problem and I'm going to rewrite it so it's easier for me to work with. So I'm going to take my 6,018 and I'm going to place that number on top and I'm going to multiply that by the 9 and I'm going to put the 9 on the bottom. Now before I find the exact product, I have to make an estimate. So I'm going to look at 6,018 and I'm going to ask myself, what's a number close to 6,018 that would be very easy to solve using mental math? So I'm going to turn that 6,018 into 6,000. And I'm just going to keep my 9 a 9. Because what I know is this. I know that when I multiply 9 times 6, that's going to give me 54. So I'm going to write my 54 down. Now behind that 6, I notice that there are 1, 2, 3 zeros. So behind my 54, I'm also going to write down 1, 2, 3 zeros. So my estimated answer turns out to be 54,000. And what I know is my exact product should be close to my estimated answer. Now let's go ahead and find the exact product. My first job is going to be to multiply the ones. So I'm going to take my 9 and multiply it by my 8 which is in the ones place. Now when I multiply 9 times 8 that's going to give me 72. So I'm going to write the 2 down and I'm going to regroup my 7. Now my next step is to multiply the tens. So I'm going to take my 9 and I'm going to multiply by the 1 which is in the tens place. 
Well, I know that 9 times 1 is going to give me 9, but I can't forget to add my regroup 7. So 9 times 1 is 9, and 9 plus 7 is going to give me 16. So I'm going to write the 6 down, and I'm going to regroup the 1. Now my next step is to multiply by the hundreds. So I'm going to take my 9 and multiply it by the 0, which is in the hundreds place. Well, I know that 9 times 0 is 0, but I can't forget to add my regrouped 1. So 9 times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 1 is going to give me a 1. Now I'm going to write the 1 down, but I don't have any number to regroup this time because my product was less than 10. So my next step is now to multiply the thousands. So I'm going to take my 9 and multiply it by my 6, which is in the thousands place. Well, I know that 9 times 6 is going to give me 54, so I'm going to write my 54 down, and my product turns out to be 54,162. Now, when I look back at my estimate, I see 54,000, and I see that these two numbers are close, so I know that my answer is on the right track. Now, let's take a look at question number 15. It's one of our real-world problem-solving questions, and it says, Mr. and Mrs. Dorsey and their three children are flying to Springfield. The cost of each ticket is $179. Estimate how much the tickets will cost, then find the exact cost of the tickets. Well, as I'm reading through that problem, there's a couple of things that stand out to me. First of all, it says to estimate how much the tickets will cost, and then I have to find the exact cost. Well, what I know is this. I know that the cost of each ticket is $179. So I'm going to start out with my 179, and I'm going to write that number down. Now, what I need to know is how many people are going to have a ticket. So what they tell me is this. They tell me that Mr. and Mrs. Dorsey and their three children are flying to Springfield. Well, I know that Mr. Dorsey is one and Mrs. Dorsey is two, and they also have their three children. So when I add that two, Mr. and Mrs. Dorsey, plus their three children, that tells me that five people will be purchasing a ticket. So I'm going to take my 179, and I'm going to multiply that by five, because once again, there's Mr. and Mrs. Dorsey and their three children. So one, two, and then add 3 to that, and that takes us to our 5. Now, our first job, once again, is to estimate how much the tickets will cost. So when I look at my problem, 179 times 5, I ask myself, what's a number close to 179 that would be very easy to work with? And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my 179, and I'm just going to make that a 200. It's close to 179, and it's very easy to work with. Now I'm going to leave my 5 just like it is, so I'm going to multiply my 200 times my 5. Well, what I know is, I know that 5 times 2 is going to give me 10. So I'm going to write my 10 down. Now I also notice that behind my 2, there's 1, 2 zeros. So behind my 10, I also have to add 1, 2 zeros. So my estimated answer turns out to be 1,000. Now I also have to find the exact cost of the tickets. So once again, we're going to use our place value and regrouping in order to solve this problem. Well, What I know is I first of all have to multiply the 1's. So I'm going to take my 5 and multiply it by my 9, which is in the 1's place. Well, I know that 5 times 9 is going to give me 45, so I'm going to write my 5 down, and I'm going to regroup my 4. Now my next step is I have to multiply by the 10's. So I'm going to take my 5 and multiply it by the 7, which is in the tens place. Well, I know that 5 times 7 is 35, but I can't forget to add my 4 to that product. So 5 times 7 is 35, and 35 plus 4 is going to give me 39. So I'm going to write my 9 down, and I'm going to regroup my 3. Now my next step is to multiply the hundreds. So I'm going to take my 5 and multiply it by the 1, which is in the hundreds place. And I know that 5 times 1 is 5, but I can't forget to add my regrouped 3. So 5 times 1 is 5, and 5 plus 3 is going to give me 8. So my answer, and I'm going to write the 8 down, my answer turns out to be, as the exact cost, that it would be $895 for Mr. 
and Mrs. Dorsey and their three children to fly to Springfield. Now, let's take a look at question number 16. It's one of our real world problem solving questions and it says, Miss Tao flies round trip twice yearly between Jacksonville and Los Angeles on business. The distance between the two cities is 2,150 miles. Estimate the distance she flies for both trips, then find the exact distance. Well, as I'm reading through this problem, what I notice is they want me to, first of all, estimate the distance she flies for both trips, then they want me to find the exact distance. Now, I notice, first of all, that the distance between the two cities is 2,150 miles. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and write down the 2,150. Now, let's talk about some of the other information they give us. First of all, they use the phrase round trip. And when they talk about round trip, that means you're going there and you're also coming back. So that would represent two flights. Now I also know that it says twice yearly. So I'm making two trips there and back and I'm doing that twice yearly. So my next step is going to be this. I'm going to take that round trip, which once again is there and back, so that's two trips, and I do that twice yearly. So I'm going to multiply the two times the two, and what I know is I'm making four trips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the 2,150 times four. Now once again, they want me to estimate the distance first. So what I know is I have 2,150, and if I'm going to estimate, I'm looking for a number close to that that's easy to work with using mental math. So I'm going to turn that into 2,000. Now, I'm going to keep my 4 just like it is, and I'm just going to multiply the 2,000 times the 4, because what I know is this. I know that 4 times 2 is going to give me 8, so I'm going to write the 8 down, now, behind that two, I notice that there's one, two, three zeros. So behind my eight, I'm also going to write down one, two, three zeros. So my estimated answer turns out to be 8,000. Now, I also have to find the exact distance that she flies. So in order to do that, I'm going to solve my problem once again using place value and regrouping. So I'm going to start first of all, I'm going to multiply the ones. So I'm going to take my 4 and multiply it by the 0, which is in the 1's place. Well, I know that 4 times 0 is 0, so I'm going to write the 0 down, and I don't have a number from the 10's place to regroup. Now, my next step is to multiply the 10's. So I'm going to multiply my 4 times my 5, which is in the 10's place, and I know that 4 times 5 is going to give me 20. So I'm going to write the 0 down, and I'm going to regroup the 2. Now, my next step is to multiply the 100's. So I'm going to take my 4 and multiply it by the 1, which is in the hundreds place. Well, I know that 4 times 1 is 4, but I can't forget to add my regroup 2. So 4 times 1 is 4, and 4 plus 2 is going to give me 6. Now, I don't have a number to regroup, so my next step is to multiply the hundreds. So I'm going to take my 4 and multiply it by my 2, and I know that 4 times 2 is going to give me 8. So I'm going to write my 8 down. And so what I know is the exact distance that is being, being flown is 8,600 miles. Now, let's take a look at your homework questions for this lesson. I would like you guys to complete question number one along with question number two. And then I also want you guys to work on numbers three through six as your homework for tonight. And you can find your homework questions in your GoMath workbook on page 14. Now, don't forget, somewhere on your homework page, I want you to let me know do you feel like you're number one a novice, number two an apprentice, number three a practitioner, or number four an expert? Now, don't forget, your homework questions for tonight will be to complete numbers one and two, as well as numbers three through six, found in your GoMath workbook on page 14. I hope you have a great evening, and I look forward to seeing you in class tomorrow.